The swamp is quiet tonight. Too quiet. Just the sound of water brushing against the boat, and the low hum of the Everglades breathing around me. Out here in the still water, it's easy to forget where you are. Florida feels ancient in places like this. Wild, alive, and always watching. For years, people have whispered about what else might be lurking in these waters. Not just alligators, not just the native crocodiles of Florida, but something far more foreign, far more dangerous. The Nile crocodile, Africa's apex predator, and somehow it's here. It sounds impossible, but in the wetlands of southern Florida, multiple individuals have been found. Verified DNA, confirmed sightings, and even captured individuals. Tonight, we're going to uncover how one of the most feared predators on Earth found a new home, right here in the Sunshine State. The state of Florida has the most introduced amphibians and reptiles in the world. Four non-native crocodilian species have been introduced to Florida since the 1960s. The slender snouted crocodile, Cuvier's dwarf crocodile, Snyder's smooth-fronted caiman, and the spectacle caiman. But the spectacle caiman is the only established non-native crocodilian in Florida. The Nile crocodile is one of the largest and most aggressive species in the crocodilian family, native to freshwater habitats across much of sub-Saharan Africa. Adult males typically reach lengths between 3.5 and 5 meters, or about 11 to 16 feet, and can weigh between 125 to 750 kilograms, 500 to 1,600 pounds, with some rare individuals exceeding 6 meters or 20 feet and tipping the scales at over 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. This size and power makes the Nile crocodile the apex predator in its environment. Capable of ambushing and subduing a wide range of prey, from fish and birds to sizable mammals and even humans. Their bite is among the strongest in the animal kingdom, with sharp conical teeth designed to hold prey underwater until drowning. In comparison, Florida's native American crocodile and American alligator are generally smaller and less aggressive. The American crocodile typically maxes out at about 4 meters or 13 feet, favors saltwater and brackish habitats, and is less commonly encountered by humans. The American alligator can grow up to about 4.6 meters or about 15 feet, but is usually more reclusive and less prone to aggression toward people, with its bite force much lesser than a Nile crocodile. Between 1986 and 2014, several Nile crocodiles were captured in southern Florida, representing confirmed evidence of this massive predator living in the wild outside of its native range. The first recorded escape happened in 1996 or possibly 1997, when a crocodile about 1.2 to 1.5 meters or about 4 to 5 feet long escaped its enclosure at Billy Swamp Safari on the Seminole Reservation in Henry County. For several years, this crocodile roamed within the boundaries of the 1,000 hectare property before being recaptured in 2000, having grown to about 3 meters or 10 feet long. And in 2009, a hatchling Nile crocodile was caught on a porch of a Miami resident in Miami-Dade County. This crocodile was transferred to a reptile farm in Louisiana, where scientists later acquired a tissue sample for genetic analysis. But more individuals followed, including two females captured in Miami-Dade County in 2011 and 2014, one at the Fruit and Spice Park in Homestead and another one in a canal in Homestead. Genetic analysis of tissue samples from these non-native crocodiles confirmed that they all shared the same genetic variations, matching Nile crocodiles from South Africa. Their genetic makeup also featured unique genetic markers that distinctly identify them as Crocodilus niloticus. Interestingly, prior DNA studies indicated that most Nile crocodiles in captivity in the US were actually Crocodilus suchus, which is the West African crocodile which means these wild individuals either came from a different source or represent a rare genetic lineage introduced to Florida. These findings provide strong evidence that the Niles found in Florida are related and likely descended from a single or limited introduction event, most plausibly through the illegal exotic pet trade or accidental releases. Though no self-sustaining breeding population has been documented, yet the confirmed presence growth success 
and genetic ties to South African individuals highlight the potential for these invasive reptiles to establish themselves and pose new ecological and safety challenges. State and federal wildlife agencies consider Nile crocodiles class 1, meaning they make it a hard process to obtain an individual of this species in Florida. Nonetheless, continued monitoring and research are crucial to understanding and mitigating the impact of these formidable newcomers on Florida's native ecosystems. Now, while they definitely would not benefit the Floridian ecosystems, would Nile crocodiles be able to thrive in Florida? Florida's climate is broadly classified as subtropical, especially in central and northern regions, while southern Florida experiences a tropical and tropical monsoon climate. This means that the state enjoys warm to hot summers with high humidity and frequent thunderstorms, alongside mild, relatively dry winters. Average temperatures generally remain over 64 Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius, even during winter months in much of the state especially in South Florida and the Everglades. This subtropical and tropical climate closely resembles the natural habitat of Nile crocodiles in Africa, which thrives in warm freshwater ecosystems with seasonal rainfall patterns. Nile crocodiles inhabit diverse environments ranging from tropical wetlands to riverine and savanna ecosystems, many of which have seasonal wet and dry periods similar to Florida's climate zones. Florida's wetlands, including the Everglades, offer abundant food resources such as fish, birds, amphibians, and small mammals for predatory crocodilians. The dense network of freshwater canals, slow-moving rivers, marshes, and swamps provide ample shelter and basking sites crucial for thermoregulation. Breeding possibilities also depend on the stability and quality of these habitats. The extended warm season and wet periods support nesting behaviors incubation and hatchling survival, similar to native crocodilians. Given Florida's subtropical climate and the ecological characteristics of its wetlands that mirror Nile crocodiles' native environments, the state provides conditions potentially favorable for their survival and reproduction if they do establish viable populations. In addition to Florida's natural wetlands, the state's extensive network of canals, artificial lakes, and suburban wetlands, many constructed for flood control, stormwater management, and urban development, significantly expands potential habitat for crocodilians like the Nile crocodile. These modified landscapes create interconnected corridors that link otherwise isolated water bodies offering extended ranges for these reptiles to explore and potentially colonize. Finding refuge and hunting grounds much closer to human settlements, artificial lakes and golf courses, parks and residential neighborhoods provide additional aquatic environments with abundant prey and shelter. These ponds and canals often support diverse fish populations, amphibians, water birds and small mammals that crocodilians can prey on. The calmer waters and warmer temperatures of these artificial habitats also create favorable microclimates, aiding thermoregulation and increasing survival during cooler periods. However, the proximity of these habitats to human developments also raises concerns about human-wildlife conflicts, safety issues, and ecological impacts on native species as these invasive crocodilians gain footholds near populated areas. One study's data clearly shows that Nile crocodiles can survive in the wild in southern Florida for at least two years. One individual from Hendry County survived at least four to five years, while another confirmed by genetic analysis from Miami-Dade County endured for two years in the Everglades. Interestingly, closely related Crocodilus sutrus or the West African crocodile at a homestead attraction in Miami-Dade County are kept outdoors all year round without artificial heat, even through record cold spells that affected native species. This demonstrates their strong adaptability to the subtropical climate. Survival rates for Nile crocodiles in Florida are highly linked to their size, with juveniles being far more vulnerable. One individual survived after introduction at a vulnerable size but grew remarkably fast, nearly doubling its body length in two years. For comparison, hatchlings in their native habitat of Zimbabwe grow about 32 centimeters or about 1 feet per year, reaching 90 centimeters or 3 feet total length in 5 years. Our Florida crocodile grew at the rate of 41 centimeters or about 1.3 feet per year, which is 28% faster than some wild Nile crocodile hatchlings from Africa. 
These findings emphasize that the epiglades can provide suitable conditions for growth and survival of this non-native species. Nile crocodiles, or apex predators, sitting at the very top of aquatic and riparian food webs in their native African habitats. In Florida, if established, they could play a powerful ecological role by regulating prey species and reshaping food web dynamics. Their presence would likely introduce a new dominant predator, with the potential to influence the abundance and behavior of native species. This new apex predator also sets the stage for competition with Florida's native crocodilians, the American crocodile and the American alligator. The American crocodile tends to inhabit coastal and brackish waters, while the American alligator favors freshwater ecosystems. And the Nile crocodiles, being highly adaptable, could overlap with both in habitat use, competing for space, food, and nesting sites. Their larger size and aggressive behavior might give them an edge in territorial disputes and dominance hierarchies, potentially displacing or stressing native species. The ecological impacts on native species could be significant. Florida's wetlands support a rich diversity of prey species, many of which are already under pressure from habitat loss and other invasive predators. The introduction of Nile crocodiles could accelerate declines in vulnerable or rare species. And when comparing the impact to another large predator, Burmese pythons have been a focus of concern for over a decade in Florida. These large constrictor snakes have successfully established breeding populations, drastically reducing populations of mammals of up to 98% in the Everglades. Their secretive nature and reproductive capacity make them very difficult to manage. Nile crocodiles poses a different set of risks. They are predators with aggressive territorial behaviors, capable of inflicting fatal attacks on a broad range of animals, including potentially humans. And while there is no evidence yet of breeding populations of Niles in Florida, their size, strength, and dietary flexibility suggests that their ecological and public safety impact could be profound if they do establish. In their native Africa, they are responsible for hundreds of human fatalities every year, and some reports even say thousands, the highest number by far of any crocodile species. And while there of course have been no attacks on humans by Niles in Florida, the mere proven presence of these predators triggers alarm bells among residents and wildlife officials alike. Nile crocodiles in Florida represent a fascinating and potentially serious ecological story. The few individuals captured in the wild have shown remarkable growth and success in the wilds of Florida, showing that this habitat is very well suited to this specific species of crocodilian. Are there still Nile crocodiles on the loose in Florida today? There are no confirmed sightings, but who knows? While the numbers definitely remain small or possibly none at all, and no established populations are confirmed, their presence highlights the ongoing challenge invasive species pose to native wildlife and, potentially in this case, human safety. Vigilant monitoring and public awareness are essential to prevent these predators from gaining a foothold in Florida. Stay informed and stay safe. See you.